Hey everybody, welcome back to Tenzin Motorsports. Today we're gonna to be talking about my experiences with a few low profile floor jacks that I want to talk about and review since we've recently purchased some new ones. But before we get all jacked up, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel, like if you enjoy this type of content, share with all your family and friends. Also make sure to leave any comments or questions you have down in the description below. And if you haven't already, also make sure to follow us on Instagram, Tenza underscore motorsports. We do giveaways and we show a lot more uh, behind the scenes content and other updates on our builds. So this is kind of where I stand right now. We had the low profile three ton Harbor Freight Jack. We purchased that, uh, I think this specific one that's sitting on the bench now is close to 10 years old. And the other one we have is about a year newer than that. We bought them roughly the same time and we've really enjoyed having that jack. The downside to this jack and there's really only one downside, there's no rebuild kits for it. So as it starts to age and leak and um, one of them's basically not pumping up and the other one's not holding and that's obviously unsafe and just they're getting old, there's no way to fix them and bring them back up as, as far as I know. I, I, I think we did a little bit of research in that there is some rebuild kits out there um, but it's not like an official thing. It's kind of like a DIY. But I think that one kit that we did find was fairly recent. And for us, it's really not worth it where we've got some spots on these jacks that start to go bad. So the screw up here that holds the handle on that starts to get um, stripped out. The pad on the other one, the center screw actually has stripped out and started to come apart. So it was time to get some new jacks. And we went over to Harbor Freight. They have the Pittsburgh one, which is what this is. And they also have this Daytona one. And I've always seen these and they look beautiful. I mean, like this is an awesome looking jack and they've got them in red and green and all sorts of other different fun colors. And so we decided to try this one out. And the reason we did this is because this last Christmas time-ish, um, we were picking these up for fairly cheap. So I think this jack retails for around 200 bucks and we picked it up for basically 150 and this one retails for around 170 and we picked it up for like 130 or 140. So they were really only 10, 20 bucks from each other and we thought we would do just two of these but like I said we decided to gamble and see how well the Daytona one does since we've always been so enamored with them every time we walk into Harbor Freight. The reason we didn't do the Pittsburgh ones is because two reasons. One, they were always sold out. They were always gone. That, this, this style here was always gone from the store. And when they were there, they really weren't on very big sales. Um, it was basically like $10 off of like 170 bucks or whatever it was. And so it really wasn't that competitive. And like I said, they were, they were gone all the time. This is a Husky one. This came from Home Depot. And if you look at them, they are the same jack. I'm assuming they come from the same manufacturer and everything. They just brand this one Husky. And when I say brand it, it's literally just stickers. So they build black and gray, whatever people are ordering, and they just slap stickers on it, different stickers depending on what store it's gonna go to. So this makes it a really interesting comparison here. Basically, I have the nice, pretty expensive one that I've always wanted to have. Every time I go to Harbor Freight, I see it. We have essentially a replacement for what I've had. And then I have two of these that I've had long-term and then I can kind of tell people what our experience has been with them. And honestly, it's been fantastic. I, I literally have no complaints with them. I'm trying to think in my head right now, I had no problems with them ever. Uh, they're heavy, but they're, they're all heavy. And so weight is a thing when it comes to jacks, but not really. I mean, you're not, you're not constantly picking these up and putting them into cars or the bed of a pickup truck and wheeling them around the garage. It doesn't really matter which one you're pulling around. It's noisy and it's heavy. So that's really all there is to the weight and the functionality of it. Now, the other thing that we want to talk about is the lift speed. This one doesn't actually lift as fast as this. So for each pump of the handle, this one's going up slightly quicker than this. It's not really that big of a deal. I don't see any instance where I pump or two extra on this one to make it the same height as going to somehow cripple your build or your ability to work on it. So it's just kind of interesting that this doesn't pump up as fast. And I would show you, but they're on the bench right now. So a little odd there. And then the other thing I want to talk about is the throw and the clearance. So 
this actually goes higher than the Daytona. And at the same time, um, this is lower here and lower here than the Daytona. And I can't seem to figure out how, but this is just easier to use. I can't tell if it's because this one, the rake on it is a little bit more aggressive and so it's less low profile for a, a smaller distance than this one because you can see this one's very long and flat. But this one is higher here, just slightly, and it, it, it's a little bit more chunky in the back than the, the Husky and the Pittsburgh one. And I've already ran into issues where this was hitting the skirt of the car before it reached where it needed to sit. So basically what ended up happening was the rear end was out of our black race car that we're building and I needed to pick up the back of the car and move it. And so we picked it up with jacks and just rolled them backwards on the lift. And this one had a harder time getting to where it needed to be than this one. So build quality, one of the things that we kind of touched on earlier, the things that started to go bad on this is because I wasn't paying attention to when this screw got loose and I kept jacking with it. And I think it just ended up kind of going like this inside of uh, where the threads are. And that's on the other jack that's uh, over here on the floor that we're getting rid of or giving away. I'm not sure quite yet what to do with these old jacks. Um, the, the screw that's on the handle, the reason that those get kind of beat up is um, you never really tighten them all the way, so they kind of jiggle. And then because I pull them off to use as a cheater bar, that's one of the reasons why they never get really tightened up all the way. So if you're not doing that, I would definitely recommend tightening them up. This one right here is one of those little push button things. And so you don't have to worry about that bolt as much. These are very small things. The reason that I'm pointing out these little things is because that's really the, the only thing that's been unreliable. And it started leaking fluid and started going bad about six months ago and started really showing its age not too much longer after that, but 10 years. I mean, 10 years for a jack that we paid $80 for. Now, you can't pick them up for $80 anymore. That was on a really good sale. That's one of the reasons why when we saw this Husky one, I was like, wow, th there's the same one. We'll just go right back to what we had. Um, in terms of comparison with the Daytona, uh, it is nice having this little rubber pad. The disc on here isn't quite as big around. Higher quality feeling as you're jacking it up. It doesn't make a lot of like weird groaning noises as it comes up. But again, that's not really something that most people are worried about when they're using a jack. Unless you're fine, unless you're just absolutely dying to have a certain color of jack, this is the one that I would say to go with. Uh, either the Husky one or if you can find the Pittsburgh one, they should roughly be about the same price if, if you can find them in stores. Uh, the Pittsburgh one was basically sold out for months and months at a time. And that's really where I stand with the uh, slightly extra cost, the slightly longer lift time and the chunkier design here towards the back, this makes me want to use this jack every chance I get. And where we're going to be lifting both sides of the car at the same time, I won't have a choice, but it's just a little bit more low profile. So hopefully I'm making this fairly clear. I would purchase this one again every single time and for the price around 130, 40 bucks, depending on what sales you can get, this is the one that I would go with. So. Thanks everybody so much for watching. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks everybody so much for watching again. We appreciate it and we'll see you in the next one.